Welcome to Wednesday's Thought for the Day. Psalm 34 is a psalm of testimony, a testimony of praise. It's a very personal psalm where David says, I sought the Lord and he delivered me. But David isn't thinking only for himself, but for all of us, that as it was done to him, so it will be done to us all. Therefore, we can be full of joy. If you focus on joy, then you will be filled with it. Focus on the light, he says, not the dark. David says his face would not be covered by shame. He had to humiliate himself to survive, but he was not shamed by what was done to him. God was not going to abandon him. Looking to God in our distress means we will shine and not be ashamed. For the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Every encounter, every tasting of God is a revelation of God's character and an invitation for you to step into the reality of knowing him. Nothing lacks for those whose God is the Lord. And I will teach them the fear of the Lord, David writes. So we are called to be truthful, righteous and peaceful in action, to turn from evil and to do good for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. How important this is today for us in the face of evident racism. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to you. It seemed in Canaan and the lands beyond that there was a problem that arose for the two and a half tribes who lived on the other side from the other tribes, the Israelites, uh, on the River Jordan. It seemed that the two and a half tribes who had settled on the other side of the, of the river uh, had done something which indicated they were turning away from God. They had built a huge altar by the River Jordan. This worried their brother tribes, the Israelites, as the true altar of God of worship was with them in Canaan, so they thought they had turned away. To find out what was going on, the Israelites sent the priest Phineas and ten chiefs, one from each of the Canaan tribes, to find out what was happening across the water. It's clear from their words that they were first and foremost concerned that their fellow tribes across the Jordan followed Yahweh still and worshipped him alone. In the end, it was clear that they were not worshipping a pagan god. They were instead still worshipping the true god, that they knew the true place of worship was in Canaan, but that they were thinking of future generations of children, that in the future there may be children growing up on the Canaan side, telling those who grew up on their side, the Reubenites and the Gadite side, that they had no right to worship God as they lived on the other side of the Jordan. So the altar was built as a testimony, a witness, that this is one people who worship one God. In Luke's reading today, we we see something of God's power. Can you add one single hour to your lifespan? God asks us. What is the point of being anxious then, if you cannot change anything to do with your life? Look at how nature is cared for, God's design and God's pattern. You are part of that. Your times are in his hands. The intimate knowledge that God has of all that he has created means it is best to worship him and trust him. If he can clothe the flowers of the fields in their beauty, how much more can he clothe and care for you? Our testimony is to the one true God who provides for us and to whom we give all our worship and praise. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. He will deliver you. Amen.